Hi there, in this video I'm going to give you some advice on how to compose the method section of your psychology lab report. The purpose of a method section is to give the reader the information they would need to replicate your study. Method sections are generally split up into five subsections, each of which contains a different type of information. Generally speaking, a method section would start with the participant subsection, in which you would outline the characteristics of the sample you used in your study. This would generally be followed by a design subsection, in which you would formally state the design of your study. For example, if it was an experimental study, you would state your independent and dependent variables. This would generally be followed by a subsection called materials, in which you would outline the apparatus, the stimuli and the materials that your study used. For example, if you were doing a questionnaire-based study, you'd want to identify and describe the questionnaires you were using. This would generally be followed by a procedure subsection, in which you would give an account of what happened to the participants in your study. And finally, there would generally be an ethics subsection, in which you would identify the particular ethical issues associated with your research and how you responded to them. So let's have a look at the participant subsection of the method first. In this section, you would describe the sample of participants used in your study. You would give information such as the total sample size, a demographic breakdown of the participants involved in your study, You'd indicate how participants were assigned to any kind of experimental condition, if that's applicable. And you'd also indicate any screening processes or exclusion criteria you may have used in your sample of participants. Let's have a look at how that works in practice. So here's the participant subsection of the example lab report. Because it is based on an observational design where participants aren't actively recruited as such, it's on the short side. If you were reporting a design where participants were actively recruited, for example, an experimental or a correlational design, then this section would contain more detail about things like how participants were recruited and a demographic breakdown of the participant sample, along things like age, gender and ethnicity. Let's turn our attention to the design subsection of the method. In this subsection, you're going to be explaining what kind of study you're doing. For example, are you using an observational design, an experimental design, or a correlational design? You're also going to tell the readers what variables your study entails. And the way you refer to these variables is going to depend on the type of design you've chosen. For example, if you've chosen an observational design, you're going to be referring to your variables as explanatory and response variables. If you've chosen an experimental design, you'll be referring to your variables as either independent or dependent variables. And if you've chosen a correlational design, you'll be referring to your variables as predictor variables or criterion variables. So let's have a look at how this works in practice. So here's the design subsection of our example lab report. As you can see, it's very straightforward. The author begins by indicating the kind of design that the study used. In this case, it was an observational design. They then go on to delineate the different variables that the study entailed. In this case, the explanatory variable was company, i.e. whether the person crossing the road did so with or without an acquaintance, and the response variable was their crossing decision, i.e. whether they crossed or did not cross the road when the red pedestrian do not cross sign was illuminated. So let's now turn our attention to the material subsection of your method. This is a section where you want to describe the stimuli, apparatus and materials used in your study. The idea being that the reader should be able to look at this section and either obtain or reproduce the stimuli, apparatus and materials you've used to put your study together. So let's see how that works in practice. Here's the material subsection of our example lab report. Once again, because we're dealing with an observational design here, this section is going to be on the short side. In fact, the only thing that really needs to be described here is the observational grid the person running the study would have used in recording whether each of the participants was alone 
or with an acquaintance when they cross the road, and whether they elected to cross or not cross when the red pedestrian do not cross signal was illuminated. As a rule of thumb, if you're reporting a study that involved more extensive materials than were used in this particular study, then what you want to do is to use your material subsection as a way of describing or providing an overview of those materials, but put in a full copy of your materials into your appendices. So if we take an example of a study that involved a questionnaire, in your material subsection, what you'd want to do is provide an overview of that questionnaire. So you'd give information like the title of the questionnaire and a citation for that questionnaire, You'd also indicate how many items the questionnaire consisted of, how the participant would respond to that questionnaire, for example, perhaps using a Likert scale from one to five, and then you'd provide some example items from that questionnaire before referring to an entire copy of the questionnaire in your appendices. Turning our attention now to the procedure subsection of the method, the whole point of this subsection is to give the reader enough information that they could replicate the process of your study. So as such, it should read as a step-by-step -step account of the administration of your study, i.e. what the participants who took part in your study would have experienced. Let's see how that works in practice. So here's the procedure subsection of our example lab report. You might want to pause the video at this point to give yourself the chance to read the text in full and press play when you're ready to continue. Hopefully having read this passage of text, you can see what the author is doing to convey the process of observation to the reader, i.e. tell the reader how the participants were observed. If you were reporting a study with a non-observational design, for example, an experimental design, you'd need to make sure that you conveyed to the reader how your study was being administered in other words, provide a step-by-step -step account of what happened to the participants during the course of your study. Whatever kind of design you're writing a procedure subsection for, the overarching aim is always the same. To provide the reader with enough information that if they wanted to replicate your procedure, they would be able to from having read your procedure subsection. So let's turn our attention to the ethics subsection of the method now. The main purpose of this section is to identify and address any ethical considerations that may have been present as you conducted your study. Let's have a look at how that works in practice. Here's the ethics subsection from our example lab report. Once again, you might want to pause the video at this point to give you the chance to read the text in full and press play when you're ready to continue. So hopefully, having read this text, you can see that what the author is basically doing is picking out the salient ethical issues associated with this particular study. And because this study was an observational design, those issues tended to revolve around the privacy of the participants being observed. But of course, the ethical issues you pick out that are associated with your own work are going to depend upon what you're studying and how you are going about studying it. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do hit the like button. If you haven't already, then please consider subscribing to my channel for more information about how psychology can help you study more effectively. Turn on the bell notification if you want to know when I post new content. Thanks very much.